What's up guys? This is Derek from moreplatesmoredates.com. Today I'm going to be talking about uh, the only health supplements that are actually really worth spending your money on. Um, you know, it wasn't that long ago, it was just like a few years ago when I would go to the health section of the grocery store and just be like baffled at how many vitamins and minerals there are on the shelf and trying to figure out which of those I need to optimize my health. And even when I knew kind of what I was looking for, there was so many variations of each product, even specifically with the same name, that I would just get so annoyed by the whole process and not even knowing like which of the 50 different ones with the same name to pick that I would just be like, fuck it and just leave the store because I just told myself I'm young and I don't need to worry about my health for years. And, you know, it took a few years before I finally determine what exactly is necessary for maximizing longevity, in particular cardiovascular longevity and some of the other very important health markers in my opinion. There's a lot of negligible stuff out there that really isn't worth spending your money on and I kind of just made, I spent a lot of time finding out what exactly I would need that would um, provide my body in particular particular with what I would need to you know stay healthy and you know I constantly get blood work to assess my health and make sure everything is up to par and stuff and my supplementation regimen is built around that so then even when I was hitting myself hard with you know like bodybuilding compounds everything would stay within really acceptable levels on my blood work uh, using the supplements I'm about to outline in this video. You know, like one thing you have to understand is walking around in a like a larger than average body, even if it's pure muscle, is always in all cases going to cause your heart and lungs to work harder in order to pro provide your body with enough oxygen uh, and blood to feel that additional mass that you're walking around with. It's just, uh, you know, that's why you don't usually see a lot of the 300 pound bodybuilders living past like 40 and they just drop dead randomly. It's always cardiovascular related and it's usually almost always because they are walking around way too heavy and they should be. Um, you know, I used to think even with that in mind, I used to think I would just not be at risk of any sort of implications for many years because I'm, in my early 20s, I don't need to worry about that stuff, but, you know, it wasn't until, you know, a few years back, my friend, one of my best friends actually dropped dead from an undiagnosed blood clot the size of a baseball traveling from his calf up to his lungs and causing a pulmonary embolism, and then that broke off into his brain and killed him instantly. Now it was at 21 years old that he had that, and he was a perfectly healthy kid. And the doctors, when he went in with like a twice the size, he went in with his calf like severely engorged to see what was wrong with it. Like obviously it's not normal that your calf is throbbing in pain and it's twice the size. And the doctors all just told him, oh, you're too young to have any issues like that. Like you probably just hurt it working out. Just take some time off. And he saw many doctors and they all told him the same thing. And soon after, just a couple weeks, boom, just like that. So... You're never too young to be at risk. Keep that in mind. And I definitely do now. Um, especially in a bodybuilding lifestyle, the huge amounts of food we eat, the resistance training, which is almost guaranteed to cause ventricular hypertrophy, the excessive muscle we carry, and like all the other things we do that increase our risk factors. Health as a whole is very important. And... You know, especially making sure your cardiovascular health is on point is probably the most important of all. Um, so, first of all, I'm going to get into what I find I take and what I find necessary. First thing being a green supplement. I don't know about you guys, but I am notoriously shitty at regularly eating vegetables. And I know most of you guys probably are too. Um, it's just... I don't know, it's just the way we eat. It's like, it's a clean, it's clean. Like we eat chicken and rice, it's clean, but it's almost always lacking in vegetables, I find, at least, 
most people I know barely eat any vegetables or fruits, and I definitely don't. I'm going to bet you don't either, but if you do, get on you, but if you don't, you should definitely invest in green supplements to try and <clears throat> get those missing nutrients that you're not getting by having regular vegetables. Um, my favorite green supplement is Greens Freak by Pharma Freak. It's, uh, you know, it just has a really good uh, nutrient profile and it doesn't taste shitty. Most green supplements taste like complete trash and, you know, obviously the nutrient profile is more of the reason why I like it, but the fact that it's actually tolerable to drink is not is a plus too. I just mix it in with my vanilla protein shakes and it's it's really easy to down on a daily basis. Um, I'm not gonna delve into all like the, the benefits of vegetables, but they're in my article if you care. But it's pretty obvious that vegetables are an important part of your diet. Uh, moving forward to lipid health, which is basically uh, it's pretty it's cardiovascular related as well, but specifically uh, cholesterol. I take uh, citrus bergamot. I take a thousand milligrams of that per day. Basically, the purpose of that is to lower your bad cholesterol, LDL, and increase your good cholesterol, your HDL. Um, you know, a study found that just one thousand milligrams per day saw so decreases in total cholesterol of twenty nine percent, decreases of LDL in it of thirty four percent, and increases of HDL, the good cholesterol that you want higher of 35%. And I have the link to that uh, study linked in my article as well that you can check out. I just get uh, the most cost efficient one I found was the Now Foods Cholesterol Pro Tabs. Um, yeah, as far as lipid health as well, I take uh, psyllium husk. I take two to three teaspoons per day, which is about 10 to 15 grams of fiber. Um, you know, if you barely eat any vegetables, like I just said, I don't, and I'm, like we just covered in uh, the greens part of this video, um, you probably don't have very much fiber in your diet either, and high in your diet either. And uh, high fiber foods in particular usually only have one source of fiber anyways, so it kind of becomes necessary to supplement to get insoluble and soluble fiber to get the best of both worlds in your diet. So I use psyllium husk two to three teaspoons per day to maintain optimal digestion and sweep uh, bad cholesterol out of the digestive tract, which helps increase your cardiovascular health. Um, also, the high fiber actually helps you stay uh, more satiated, so it helps with dieting too. That's uh, kind of an indirect benefit of it, but I mostly just use it for the health benefits, obviously. Um, let's see. Moving to uh, digestive and gut health, I, uh, the psyllium husk also falls into that category because it greatly helps regulate your bowel movements and uh, you know just making sure that your system is flowing the way it's supposed to. If you know what I mean, um, I take uh, turmeric, also known as uh, curcumin. I think that's how you pronounce it: curcumin or curcumin. I think it's curcumin. I take twelve hundred milligrams per day. Curcumin is the active ingredient in turmeric, and it's a powerful anti-inflammatory and a very strong antioxidant. Basically, what it does is it reduces the risk of high cholesterol, relieves chronic joint pain, and other chronic inflammation-related inflammation -related issues. Um, I use this one brand in particular because it includes uh, bioparine, which is a substance that enhances the bioavailability of the curcumin by... 2000%. So, you know, a lot of these supplements will have the, like the right ingredient, but that ingredient could be useless in the first place if it's not bioavailable. Bioavailable is basically how much of it your body can put to use. So if it has a bioavailability of 0%, even if you're ingesting 1200 milligrams of turmeric, none of it could get used if it's not bio bioavailable. Um, how much it really makes a difference with the bio pairing, I'm not really sure, but I just figured I might as well because, um, you know, why not? Like, why would you pick one without it if it's around the same price anyways and it has better reviews? So, um, I also use a probiotic. The one in particular that I use is a probiotic duo. Um, basically, 
you know, mainly this stuff regulates, like I said, it's for uh, digestive and gut health, but it also, I've noticed it really helps allow me to survive my, like, I have really intense cheat days sometimes, not just meals. Basically, when I'm dieting really hard, I... I'll not cheat for several days on end and then eventually it gets to a point where my body is just craving junk food to such an intensity. I need to just like set aside a full day to just like binge eating garbage in order to like like get rid of all those cravings. I can't just have like a burger and fries a cheat meal. I need to, every like once in a blue moon I'll have like a full blown like cheat day where I just like eat everything in sight even if I'm not hungry I like eat past the point of like my stomach killing me and you know my body in particular it's kind of it's kind of tailored towards clean food now like it's adjusted itself to all the clean food I've been giving it for you know like months on end and even sometimes just having like a burger and fries and like some ice cream after can like like really fuck with my digestive system because I'm not I'm not used to it at all. I'm like it just like overloads my body and I just like get like a stupid stomach ache after. And so what I've noticed is uh taking the probiotic before uh my cheat meals actually helps mitigate the chance of getting like stomach and like gut pains, which I would normally get from junk food. Like my body just hates junk now. Like if I get McDonald's, I'm like guaranteed to like have a really bad stomach ache after and taking the probiotic before my cheat meals actually really helps relieve this and obviously it's just good to have a probiotic in your supplementation regimen anyways because if you're not digesting your food properly you're not absorbing the nutrients properly and if you're not absorbing the nutrients properly you're not going to be making the gains that you want to be making and then the food you're eating is not being used as efficiently as it could be. Um, the Probiotic Duo I use uh, contains an advanced pre and pro probiotic formula, and it requires a lower dose and acts within hours, not days, like some, like most prebiotics. So this works best for me because obviously I need it to work quickly. If I'm taking it, I can't have it take you know, like a few days for it to start working. So I'm not, <laughs> I'm not saying use this so you can like eat a bunch of, a bunch of shit and not feel like have a stomach ache after, but it's definitely something that's going to help regulate your gut health and promote proper digestion on a day-to-day -day basis anyways. Um, moving on to joint health, the turmeric slash curcumin falls into this category as well because of its, uh, it relieves joint pain caused by inflammation, which is a big help, especially for, you know, like weightlifters. Um, I also use krill oil, omega-3s. I use 1,000 milligrams per day. Um, basically, EPA, EPA and DHA are essential fatty acids that the human body can't produce by itself. So you either have to get it from food or you have to get it from supplements. And... Um, most individuals like you're probably not eating fish on a regular basis or the right kind to get that amount of omega-3s in the first place and so in that you know like almost all instances it becomes necessary to have an omega-3 supplement um, basically what it does is ensures proper function of your brain nervous system um, provides anti-inflammatory benefits improves mood regulates insulin sensitivity improves muscle growth and encourages better sleep um, I used to take fish oil until I found out that krill oil is actually a superior source of EPA and DHA. Um, I outlined why in the article. It's kind of like a scientific key. So it's a science reason. So it's kind of, you're going to want to read it as opposed to hearing it. It doesn't, it's not very interesting to hear, let's put it that way. Um, also krill or, uh, krill are harvested near Antarctica, which is far from, the population of mercury and other toxins that fish oil products may contain um, like global fish basically global fish populations are much more susceptible to mercury heavy metal poisoning and krill aren't so you know a lot of people always talk about the risks of having too much fish in your diet because of mercury poisoning 
taking a krill supplement as opposed to fish oil is gonna completely offset that. So keep in mind too, taking too much EPA and DHA can cause blood thinning. So if you are on blood thinners, be aware of that. Talk to your doctor first because it might cause some issues if you aren't aware of what's going on with supplement interactions with what you're currently taking. Obviously, I don't know what your prescription medications are, so just run it by your doctor before you take any of these. Um, I use uh, Cree Nutrition's krill oil because it contains 500 milligrams per soft gel, so that means I only have to have two of them per day as opposed to other supplements. Sometimes you have to take up to like six to eight pills to get like a gram of omega-3s, which is really annoying because I already have to pop so many other pills, so I just the less the better for me. And... It's also one of the only supplements that actually contains what it says it does. Like a lot of krill oil supplements, they they say krill oil on the label, but then if you actually look on the nutrient like facts, you'll notice that there's not very much krill oil at all, and most of the omega threes are coming from cheaper fish oil. So just be aware of that if you're buying a krill oil supplement from somewhere else other than the one I linked in my article. Um, for heart health in particular. Uh, krill oil omega-3s fall into this category as well because they were scientifically proven to improve cardiovascular health by improving cholesterol levels, increasing good cholesterol, and lowering C-reactive protein levels in the blood. Turmeric and curcumin also fall into this category because it prevents the buildup of plaque in arteries, which in turn prevents the onset of arterial... I always don't know how to pronounce this word. Ethereal... Atherosclerosis? I don't know why. I just like literally can't say it for some reason. Atherosclerosis. Leading to blocked arteries, a stroke, or a heart attack. So, yeah, obviously plaque buildup in the arteries is never a good thing. And if you have any sort of like hindrance to your blood flow getting around your body and circulating efficiently, that is something that needs to be dealt with and... Preventing inflammation and plaque buildup in the arteries is actually a very, very, very important thing in regulating your cardiovascular health. Um, I also take coenzyme Q10, also known as, I guess some people call it Coke 10 or Coke, Coke Q10. I take 100 milligrams of that per day. Uh, it's made naturally in the body, but a deficiency in it can lead to heart failure, chest pains, and high blood pressure. So I supplement with it to ensure it maintains a healthy level of LDL, which is the bad cholesterol in my body, supports optimal functioning of the heart muscle, and it also supports the health of vessel walls and, you know, just like cardiovascular health in general. It can also play a role in reducing the number of migraine headaches you get too, as well as the severity of them. I don't necessarily have migraines, so it's not as relevant to me, but if you do, might be worth a shot. Um, I just use, a, it's called Doctor's Best High Absorption CoQ10 with Biopurine because it's the cheapest one I could find. And the Biopurine again helps bioavailability of it. How much it really does, I'm not really sure, but it's the most cost efficient one anyways, so whatever, it's fine with me. Um, moving on to like overall general health, you always wanna have a good multivitamin so that's like the bare minimum you want to have is a good multivitamin. Um, I use uh, Optim, Optimum Nutrition's Optimin because it's the it's actually the only multivitamin I've ever used that I actually noticed a difference in my energy levels after I started taking it. And it actually has a pretty impressive uh, nutrient profile too with over 75 ingredients. And 22 of those are vitamins and essential minerals in actually useful doses as opposed to just like tiny little like tiny little doses just to put it on the label sort of thing and it has a lot more vitamin d than most competitors too and here in canada we don't have a ton of sunlight so most of us up here are deficient in vitamin d so that works well for me as well um you know like most multivitamins kind of like serve the same purpose but you know, if the, this one, I actually noticed the difference in my energy, so that's enough for me to assume it's working better than any of the other ones I've tried. 
And just like on paper, looking at the nutrient profile, it's pretty obvious that it's a lot, it's, it's superior to most of the other ones I've tried as well. Um, the next category is optional. It's uh, liver health. Um, basically, the, there's only one liver supplement that I really think stands head and shoulders above all else. And I kind of just threw this into the article and video just in case you might be one of those who's fond of abusing your liver with frequent alcohol consumption or Accutane use or oral steroid use or any other kind of whatever medium you're using to like add toxicity to your liver and crank your liver enzymes way up. I uh, recommend taking Tudka, which is basically the only thing I really think is worth buying. Like, I don't know, obviously, like there's milk thistle and like Live 52 and all that stuff, but they don't even compare in any capacity to the effectiveness of Tudka, in my opinion. Tudka will like literally chop several hundred off of your AST and ALT liver enzyme lab results in a matter of weeks. And, you know, that should bring your liver back to where it should be. And, you know, hopefully you're not abusing the shit out of your liver, but if you are, Tudka is the shit for that. I just use premium powders Tudka brand because it's, uh, it's the cheapest and I had the best reviews, so I've been using that one for a while whenever I need it, but I don't really abuse my liver as much as I used to, but when I do, Tudka is my go-to. Um, you know, concluding the article, like, it sounds like there's a decent amount of stuff that I take, but in reality, there's so many damn vitamins and minerals in the stores that it's like, and a lot of people just go and they buy like, like 30 plus of them because they think that they need like vitamins A through Z to be stay healthy. But keep it simple guys, take what's necessary and nothing more is my kind of motto. Cardiovascular is the main uh, focus of your longevity kind of thing. Like everything else is obviously plays a role in like how healthy you are, how how your body is going to, you know, like stand up to aging, the aging process. But cardiovascular is the main downfall of so many people and it's so controllable. So that's why I always recommend having a focus on keeping your heart absolutely top tier. And, you know, I don't, when I picked these supplements in the first place, it was kind of like comprising my, my, uh, uh, arsenal or whatever of, what I found was actually useful. I didn't, I didn't choose them based on like their proposed benefits on like the label or like what kind of benefits they're supposed to have. But instead I took the ones that actually had the most supporting data on them to prove they are the most effective in their respective categories. And that's how I chose them. Um, that pretty much wraps it up. I hope you guys found this article informative and take your health more seriously if you aren't already. I know, especially the young guys, we just like put it off for so long and it's never too early to start taking your health seriously. The sooner the better. Um, start making this a habit to maintain a health like supplement protocol that you continue for the rest of your life is my recommendation. So. Hope you guys found it helpful. Please go to my blog, moreplatesmoredates.com, and subscribe. And click the subscribe button below on my YouTube channel. Subscribe to my channel. And yeah, stay tuned for more videos and articles.